and welcome to the Guy, Sharon, and Clint podcast. Shh, there's a moth in here, and it looks extremely angry. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. Oh, hello everybody. How are you? Guy, Sharon, and Clint. We're here. We're ready to go. We're ready to do the radio. Sharon definitely hasn't been having a nap in the studio and is now not definitely stop, not struggling stop. to get up. I'm stuck. Why, I'm good. No, I'm good now. Are you here? Right, sorry, I got stuck. Okay. I got stuck. I was just having a wee pound nap. Are you okay? Welcome back. Hello. You're Hello. here. You're here. You've got bed here. <laughs> oh, God, Sharon. <laughs> every single day you do that. <laughs> Uh, sorry, sorry, I don't have bed here. I've been lying on my back. Guy, Sharon and Clint's itch. It's time to play a game we usually play with Guy, but this week we'll play it with his other favourite guy. What's um, in Clint's mouth? My mouth has been volunteered today. It's just so roomy and big. It is big, isn't it? It is. It is, it is, is it bigger big. than Guy's? Because Guy has a bigger head than me. Mm, Mu- it, Guy has a much bigger head than me. About No, you guys have about the same size mouth. Yeah, about the same mouth. He's got maybe bigger teeth than you. But we, I oh, want you to do some stretches with that mouth right now. And pop. Wow, you sound like Chris Martin. Are you in Coldplay? <laughs> Sounds like it. Can you chuck the item in your mouth now, please, yeah. Clint? It's quite big at the top end. Like, it's quite... It definitely goes big to small. Yes, 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 it it's does. Top, it's top heavy. Put yes, it that way. Um, okay. I'll try and get the top in there. Okay. What's in your mouth, Clint? Oh, my God. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. It's very phallic. Oh, oh. Oh. Vovel, hovel, vovel. A what? Okay, all right. If you think you know what is in Clint's mouth, call us now, 0800 The Edge, or text us to 3343. Oh, that's so gross. Um, and so, so wrong. <laughs> Hello, Clem. Welcome to the show. What is in Clint's mouth? Uh, is that a bottle of herbal essence? <laughs> <laughs> no. <coughs> Mm-mm. Sorry, I just choked. <laughs> no, it is not a bottle of herbal <laughs> essence, Clem, but <laughs> good guess. Dylan, what do you think's in Clint's mouth? Um, is it a bunch of hubba bubba? Mm. Oh, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, it's very close. It's a, no, actually not close at all. I just wanted to make you mm. feel good, Dylan. Definitely not hubba bubba. <laughs> Emma, what do you think it is? A turkey baster. <laughs> a turkey <laughs> baster. <laughs> it's not a turkey baster. It's not a turkey Sorry, baster. Emma, no. <laughs> it's not that. Alice, what do you think it is? A torch. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, uh. Listen, oh, listen, listen to me. He's saying. Any? Do you want to have another guess, Alice? Uh, 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 uh. No. I can't even. I can't even hear what he's saying. I know. Sorry, he's, it, no. he's an idiot, Alice. Don't worry about uh, it. Uh, Finally, Daniel on 0800 The Edge. What is in Clint's mouth? Uh, is it a bobblehead doll? Mm. Yes. We will give you an extra mm. prize. We will give you an extra prize if you can guess what the bobblehead is. Oh my gosh. So say um, it again, Clint. It's a bobbleheaded what? Gandalf? No. <laughs> Listen to what he's saying. Listen carefully, Daniel. A okay, bobbleheaded. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I have no idea. I can't I'll, hear that. I'll, give, I'll give you a hint, Daniel. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Angel! No! No! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! There's so much saliva! Ah, uh, you've lost. You, we won't give you the extra prize, Daniel, but we will give it you was, the prize saying bobblehead. It was what, Clint? A bobbleheaded Jesus. Oh. It slid out because oh, he got too lubricated from all the saliva because I couldn't swallow with Jesus in my mouth. Oh, God. That's disgusting. Well done. Daniel, hold the line. We're going to hook you up with a guy. Jesus! I had to spit you out! I don't know what that was. That was the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Um, (laughs) Sorry. Sorry about that, Daniel. (laughs) Oh, God. Um, I would just like to make apologies to the uh, Christian community out there who just got offended by what Clint just said. Call me Jesus. Um, Next on the show. Don't say it again. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. Itch. If there is one thing that I know about Clint, apart from his love of wearing makeup to work. Hey, I was on the TV this morning. Stop bragging about it, mate. You just like wearing powder. 
He's quite disgusting. No, that's not he's where this is so going. Gross. No, no, no. He's just honestly the disgustingest person I've ever met. That's not where I wanted to take this conversation. <laughs> um, call us on 0800 The Edge right now, and you need to do it before the end of the break, because if you can't prove me wrong before the end of this, then I think I've found the most disgusting thing in your house. And it's not just my house, it's probably every house. I love that you just said you weren't disgusting, and now we're talking about the world's most disgusting thing but you've in got, your house. You've got one of these in your house as well. Do I? Yes, you do. So I was. Why don't you tell me about it before now? I was I was at home uh, this morning, mm-hmm. pottering around. Yes. And I um, and I needed to clean the toilet. I thought, oh, I'll do a bit of housework and I'll clean the toilet. Oh, you be a good flatmate. Toilet brush. No, I think the most disgusting thing in oh. your house is not the toilet brush. Yes, I know. It's the holder that the toilet brush sits in. Yes, because they fill up with water. Because all the toilet juice. And the poo juice and the yes. wee juice drains off the toilet brush holder Why and pulls in the bottom of the container. Hang on, let me just finish this. So you scrub your toilet with a toilet brush, and when you're doing that, you're rinsing it with the toilet, and you, it's also getting, like, um, uh, nutritious toilet duck on it, cleaning it. Aww. But the poor toilet brush reservoir never gets cleaned. I empty- it just holds the brush. I try to empty it quite often, but our yes. one's got holes in the top, so you have to make sure you empty it properly, otherwise it will run down onto your hands and you've got uh, poo juice on your hands. But how, yeah. But if you just forget to empty it... That is so disgusting. Oh, were you at my house going, sweet juice? No, no. You just have one. Everybody's got one. I think this is the most disgusting thing in anybody's house. And I challenge you mm. right now to think of something grosser in your house than not the toilet, not the toilet bowl, not the toilet brush, but the holder that holds the toilet brush. Mm. Mm. I can't think of anything. No, you can't, can you? No, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Um... No, I actually can't think of anything. There we've, you go. Got, so we've got Dan on 0800 The Edge, though. Dan, you reckon you can top the the juice container? Yeah, what about the toothbrush cup <gasps> on, the, yes! on the sink? No. Yes, because it gets all smelly and it goes that weird coloured juice no. at the bottom. Unless you're... Yeah, and it- no, go ahead. It's on display. Unless, it's on display for everyone to see. Okay, yes, here's the, here's the difference, point, though. Dan. Here's the difference, though. That is scrubbing your mouth. If you, Unless you're using your toothbrush to scrub your bum or... Um, no, that's the only way that the toilet brush holder could be less gross than the toothbrush holder. Oh, I think they're quite similar. I really? think Dan's got a good point. Sarah, what do you think it is? I I think the drain in the um, shower is disgusting. Oh, full of skin and hair yeah. and soap. It's just full of everything. But it, but that is being rinsed out every day. Every day the but shower's running and it's rinsing. Is it? Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's, it's clean one. It's, yeah, but it's running exactly. fresh. At least some fresh water through it every day. What if there's you, no drainage on the toilet brush holder? You live with a whole lot of boys, though. You yeah. probably all shower wears. Yeah. So oh, shower gonna be, wears. That's going to be in the shower when you clean mm. that out. It'll be in there clogged up. Last here. one. Go to Haz. If okay. he can't beat it, then then we're staying with the toilet brush holder. Haz. Can you beat the toilet brush holder as the most disgusting thing in your house? Yeah, I reckon the incinerator, you know the thing that munches up all your old food? Yeah. When it stays in there, I've had to clean one out in that. Absolutely sterile. Yeah. It would be, but, but your not... butt, but your butt is like a human incinerator, and then that thing is the holder that holds the brush that cleans. The... I think that you also can't separate this because you've got an irrational fear of number twos, yeah. <laughs> like you do. Anyone even says, the "I'm word sorry, no, poo, poo, you freak out." No one in that conversation, and they were all disgusting things. I don't think anybody <gasps> found anything more disgusting than the toilet brush holder. I've got one, but I can't say it on here. I've won. Okay, in your mind you have. For me, just when you go home tonight, maybe take a quick look, tip it out, and maybe chuck it in the dishwasher real quick. Sanitary bin. Oh, no! Okay, well, I don't have one of those. Go on, Sharon and Clint, the edge. I don't have one, but we've got one at work. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. In studio right now, we have someone we met just walking down the street today. Her name is Dana, and Dana is... (laughs) That's the worst (laughs) cover for her I've ever heard. Shh. It's a fake name. Okay. Okay. Dana is going on a blind date tonight, and she's a little bit apprehensive about this. Dana, how did this come about? Um, Put a, a fake voice on Dana. Oh, Deanna. No. We've already what? gone with Dana. <laughs> no, we've already got a fake name. You see a fake voice to disguise your voice. Jesus, Dina, you're terrible at this. Okay, okay. okay. Let's, just, let's, just, let's just put it out there. Let's put it out there. So tonight you're going on a blind date. Yes. Is this your first blind date? Yeah, it is. Are you nervous? I'm incredibly nervous. I've got like so many butterflies having a party in my tummy right now. How will you know 
who he is. Have you guys got yeah. like a, a, a thing? Okay, well, see, the thing is, um, it's a girl a girl from work. Yeah. Um, it's her boyfriend's brother, and he's a, they're identical twins. Okay. okay. So oh, I know what okay. Like. How do you know that the girl from work isn't just a swinger and is giving her <laughs> boyfriend an opportunity? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. 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 You yeah, thought about that, didn't you? Did think about no, that? Well, I, the whole swapping thing has come up before. Like, we've joked about it, but. What? Where have you been hanging out? Okay. Uh, no, like, just in conversation. Okay, okay, okay. So it's a blind date. Do you, do you know the guy's, do you know the guy's name? Uh, no. You, no, no, you don't have to say his name. Do you know it? Yes. We're not going to ask you it. Yeah, yeah. I want to know, have you Facebook stalked him yet? Uh, he doesn't have Facebook. Wow. I know. Oh, that, that makes it, it so yeah. hard. Yeah. Did you Facebook stalk the brother, though? No. Did no. you go back and see if he's got a Bebo page? No. What he doesn't do, have any social media. What do you know about him? Um, that he's a builder. Yeah. Where are you going to meet him? At a bar. So at you're a- both meeting at the bar. He's not going to pick you up. No, no, no. We're okay. meeting at the bar. Has anyone warned you about, uh, like, blind date nightmares? We've got a video on our Facebook page right now, facebook.com forward slash edge afternoons, where... Uh, People meet up for a blind date, and the girls put on a fat suit. Yeah, just to see the reaction of uh, people seeing her hot, hot ass picture, and then seeing when they've like done her up yeah. and the guy's reaction. You've Doesn't got, go well. You've got to see it. Go and watch it now. Oh my god! Are you I? are you worried about like if someone turns if you turn up and he's not what you expect, and you have to be like, ah, oh, um, got a got a phone call, and then you have to do the runner. Or yeah, have you like got that? an emergency I, exit honestly, plan? I haven't thought this far ahead, but if you could offer me any advice, I'd be. <laughs> Well, let's I'll just let's, take it and run. I think the best thing about blind dates is hearing the horror stories yeah. of what can go wrong. Like on I'm them. sure you'll, I'm sure you'll be fine, but that doesn't make for interesting radio. <laughs> let's go this afternoon and have a look for your blind date horror stories. That so we've got a text message from a girl here that says, "I went on a blind date with a guy who um, wouldn't stop spitting whenever he talked, oh. and I'm pretty sure he was wearing an adult diaper." Whoa! <laughs> is she going to go on a blind date with Guy Williams? <laughs> 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 Actually, be helpful to you, Dana, because it will tell you the things to look out for on your date. And if you spot these things, unless you're into spitters with big adult diapers, then um, you can do a runner at the right time. Oh, 800 The Edge with your blind date <laughs> horror stories and any tips for our um, person that we just met, Dana, who's in studio with us right now, who definitely doesn't work at The Edge. And her name definitely isn't Dana. <laughs> <laughs> Bring him forward. Let's um, get her ready for a date tonight. We've had some text through, but no one wants to come on air with us in fear of the psycho they went on a date with hearing it. We got a text message from, and I'd like to, this, well, let's do some role playing here. This is a text message situation that happened from a girl who went on a blind date with a guy and then at the end of the date he dropped her home and she didn't invite him in but he invited himself and he's like oh I'll just come in for a cup of tea oh god invited himself in and then they had a cup of tea and she's like you need to leave you can't stay here and he just hung around what's your go to to get to to get the guy out of the house if it's not going to be a sleepover situation Uh, it's it's not going to end up at my house to start with okay we're leaving at the car okay I've already made my mind up about that. But okay. I don't know whether to go in for a hug or a handshake or... Um, do the do the friendly, like, thanks so much, cheek kiss. Yeah. Cheek kiss. But then what if he, like, grabs my face and decides to go in for the pass? Well, yeah. just have a passion and then go, gotta <laughs> go, mate. So, what's your blind date horror story? Oh, sorry, so hang on a second. Sorry. Are you there? So, are you yeah. there? Yeah. Okay, what is your blind date horror story? Um, I went on a date with this guy and it was quite bad, but it didn't happen on the date. It was afterwards when I tried to let him down easy. Um, he offered me money for sex instead. <gasps> no! <laughs> I know, yeah. Soph. I'm, and I'm, he was quite persistent um, about it as well. Yeah. Soph, did you take the money? No way. How much was he offering? Was yeah, did, did he did he offer a dollar amount? Um, yeah, because me and my friends kind of got curious, so we asked him. Um, he offered 120, 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, he was real well thought out about it when he explained it too. It, it was it quite sounds silly. like sounds like someone's done that before. It's, so yeah, good it sounds like he knows the going right. Good on you for getting out of there. We got a great text in. It said went on a blind date to KFC once, got some chicken drums, and not only did she eat the chicken, but she <laughs> ate the bones as well. <laughs> there was nothing left by the end of the date. It was disgusting. I never saw her again. Deal breaker. Dana, are you are you eating on this date tonight? <laughs> no, no. No. Okay, no. that's okay because. You don't have to be nervous yeah. about how you eat then. <laughs> Sam, what's your blind date horror story? 
Well, I went on a date with a guy who was like 40. I'm only 25. Mm-hmm. Thought it'd be a good date, go out with a bit more of a grown-up kind of guy, sick of the young dudes. Mm-hmm. And um, we went for a walk along the beach, and he wanted to go and get an ice cream. Cute. And he wondered if I could pay for the ice cream as he'd forgotten his wallet. Classic. We were in the dairy, and he asked me if he was allowed a double scoop. (laughs) 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 You're right. It was horrendous. I was waiting for this to get worse and worse. (laughs) Well, it did kind of, because after that in the car, he was talking about gardening and things. I didn't realise it, but my sister had rung me, she would pocket called me, she could hear how oh, horrific our conversation was, and she's still giving me shit about it now. Sam, that is bad. Sam, one important right. question, did you let him have a double scoop? I let him do it. I there guess. you go. That yeah. was very nice of you. you I'm a the, nice girl, Sam, but the, never again. The worst part about this conversation is that just as you were like telling us what happened... Our boss, who would be the equivalent of me being 28, he's like 44, he stood outside the office, I just looked at him thinking, <sighs> it's, like oh, a, yeah. it's like going on a date with Leon. Hey, <laughs> Dina, good, good luck for tonight. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. And if he asks for a double scoop, mate, that's your chance. You get out of there. Get out. Hi, Sharon and Clint. Itch. Shaz Dog. Yes, Clint. Anything you'd like to share with the group? I am excited about the Mad Butcher No, coming anything you dreamt about last night that you'd like to share with the group? Macaroni cheese. Uh, any captains of the All Blacks that you'd like to share with the group that you dreamed about last night? No. Tell You're it. a dick! You... We talked about no, this before the I show. I was not in this conversation. I, said, I did not want to talk about this on air. I said, Sharon, I don't want this to get back to anybody. Break four of four o'clock, we'll get you and tell us about your Richie dream, and you're like, yeah, it was so weird. No, that didn't happen. It that happened. Did. Okay, so a couple of months ago, I had a dream that we were going to interview Richie McCaw, and instead of him um, coming to the interview, he came up to me and he said, quick, let's go. He grabbed my head and we ran away, and I got such a fright that we're holding hands in the dream that I woke up. Yeah. Yeah. And then no! what happened What happened to last night in the sequel? No! Tell us what tell us what happened in the dream. He's not here. He's in Argentina, and no, even if he was I, here, he wouldn't care. It makes me sound like an absolute creep because these stories get back. Because I saw an All Black on the weekend, and he was giving me absolute shit about it. Mm-hmm. Chill out, mate. Chill out about your friendships with I the All Black. I had a dream. I had. <laughs> I had a dream that which of course my boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> and we may or may not have, have made out quite a lot <laughs> <laughs> and I may or may not have snoozed my alarm so I could go back to sleep in hopes that the dream would carry on. You're not alone. Mitchell, hello. <laughs> Mitchell, are you there? Yeah. You also dreamed about Richie McCall last <laughs> night, didn't you? Yeah. What happened the- What happened in yours? Oh, no. oh, I can't really remember. It was a bit weird. I was at like a mansion and there was like this big party and I was like getting chased, but then I found Richie and then as soon as I found him, the people that chased me stopped and everything was all good and like... Oh, there you go. Yeah. Did you did you pass him like Sharon did? Uh, nah. He just, see, he just weird, started talking to me about rugby. The weird thing about it, though, <laughs> is that where I met him, I was like going to... I thought I was in my dream. Yeah. I didn't realise that Richie was my boyfriend at this point. I thought yeah. I was going to meet my husband. And um, I was waiting at... If anyone has been there before, I was waiting at the bottom of the escalator by the florist at North City Plaza in Porirua. Okay. And he walked over with some flowers. He's like, hey, babe. Specific. Yeah. And I was like, babe. And then you guys just started pashing. And no, and then we was like talking and then we went back to obviously where we lived, yeah. which must have been in Titaki Bay or something. How hard did you try and stay asleep this morning? So hard. <laughs> I was supposed to up, I was supposed to up at 7.15 and I got up at 9 o'clock. Just like, because oh, you know how sometimes you go back to sleep, the dream continues? Yeah. I was just hoping that we were at least at the like, bow, back a bow part. <laughs> I could say hi. Go Sharon and Clint. Um, if anyone asks, this is Megan on with Clint today. <laughs> this, Megan. Is, this is Sharon. Megan. The guy Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. And you can ask anybody. Go ahead and ask anybody. Yeah, you can ask anybody. Anything, anything, anything. Today, our special guest is Sir Peter Leach, the Mad Butcher. What did you think of that song? Who was singing that? That rubbish. That was- <laughs>
<laughs> There's me and um, some um, unknown guy by the name of Guy Williams. He's an up-and-comer. Oh, mate, he's fantastic. He's a lovely man. Do you he like reckon, him? He said I should be Prime Minister. Oh, well, he, yes, also, he yes. also tells everyone else that he should he be Prime John Minister. He told John Campbell he should be Prime Minister, too. <laughs> he, he's normally here. He'll be gutted that he did, wasn't here for you coming in. I'll be gutted he wasn't here either, because I'm going to smack him next time I see him. Oh, why? Yeah. I just feel like smacking him. <laughs> <laughs> he's just got one of those faces. It's what most people say. It's what most people say. We've got an Ask Me Anything, so if you want to ask a question, then call us 0800 The Edge or text us to 3343. We've got a few uh, questions that have come through already. First one, what is your advice to people that want to start up a small business and grow it to a big business like yours? Uh, just work hard mm-hmm. and treat people how they want to be treated yourself. It's very simple. I mean, mine's a very stale story. I'm in I'm in Harawera. Is it Harawera in Taranaki? Yeah, ha- Harawera. Yeah, tomorrow yep. night speaking. And all I, I talk about it, you know. It's, um, you know, I, I still don't know my off a times table, you know, and... To be fair, I'm a dumb prick. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a fact of life, though. And um, it's just hard work and treat yeah. people fairly. And, you know, treat people how you want to be treated yourself, really. And uh, you can do it. I've got a question for you. Are you a real butcher? The best, mate. Really? I am the best. Can you still slice up a, um, a cow don't like nobody's to, business? Mate. Got the money in the bank. I know, you, I know you do, <laughs> but if, the, if push came to shove and someone called you on it, do you back yourself to be able to um, chop something up well? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> only, only because I broke all the scaphoid bones in my hand, so if I okay. hold a knife too long, it swells up now. So oh. my, days, my days are numbered. But, hey, I could tell you stories till the cows come home, brother. Oh, good. <laughs> we've, got, we've got another question that comes in. It's also a meat-related question. Do you let anybody else cook your steak? Or do you always do it Please, yourself? Please, I don't cook. That's why I married my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Married 49 years this November. Mate, she cooks the what, steak. What are you going to do for her for your 50th wedding anniversary? Taking her away to a dirty weekend. Oh, God. <laughs> I bet you are as well. I bet you are. We've got a call from Andrew on 0800 The Edge. Andrew, what's your question? Hi, I just want to say I'm a huge fan. Um, my question is, uh, when you want meat, do you just walk into a mad butcher and help yourself? I wish I did, Andrew. I go there and pay there, but because I've uh, got the gold card, Winston Peter gold card, I do get the discount. They do give a discount, Andrew. Because you don't, you don't, you don't own the Mad Butchers anymore, no, do I've you? I've sold. I've sold. Now, very bright. No, yep. I sold about four or five years ago. I'm now what they call a brand ambassador, mm-hmm. and so they pay me a retainer because no one can do the ads as good as me. Get out here, old mate, the Mad Butcher. There it is, <laughs> right there. I say it in my sleep. We're having sex with me and my wife, and I go, Get out here, old mate, the Mad Butcher. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, the edge. would give me a heart attack. Mate, i got to ask you a question. How come every time I see you at the fight for life and you've had a couple, you try to kiss me? Oh, <laughs> that is a lie. That is a lie. You always, we always have the same conversation. You always tell me I look good. I always tell you you owe me a kilo of Cheerios, and then I try and kiss you. But it's mainly, you know... I don't mind. Did you bring the Cheerios you're, in? You're a bay magnet. I delivered them to a house the other week. Oh, you yeah. did not. <laughs> she doesn't want to tell you. You're Ooh. such a liar. Yeah. We've got Megan on the phone. Megan, what's your question? Hi. Um, I would like to know um, how how did you get to London, Mad Butcher? Megan, I tell you what. I was in a hotel with a guy called Tim Bickerstaff, and we were looking for a gimmick. And a big Mary bloke walked into the bar and he said, there's the F and Mad Butcher. And that's why I got the name. But we dropped that F, that F word. That, yeah. yeah. That wouldn't go so yeah. good on the radio ads. No. no. Yeah. So that's how I got it, Megan. There we are. Done. Was, good. was that how you thought he got it, Megan? No, not really. How did you think that he got it? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for your call, babe. Taylor, what's your question? Sir Mad Butcher, I would like to know what your favourite meat is. Mmm, this is a good question. Oh, I like a bit of rump steak, mate. I, I like a nice bit of rump. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I like a bit of rump. But then I like crumb <laughs> cutlets. I'm a meat eater, to be fair. Mm. Yeah, I'm a meat eater. What's your opinion on vegetarians? I won't even go there, mate. Really? It'll no. be a deal breaker. Well, I'll tell you why. Yeah. I'm dirty on them, okay? Okay. I'm going to tell you why. Yes. I spend all this money making these vegetarian sausages, okay? Yes. Spent about 30 or 40 grand, you know, and they never sold. Yeah. And I'm spewing because I spent all this money and I think they're going to make me rich. But then I didn't realise vegetarians don't like going into butcher shops. No, because they can smell the meat. Yeah. 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 No, that'll be the issue. That's a good point, actually. I didn't even think about that. Jason, what's your question? And what made you a hardcore Warriors fan? Uh, Mate, I started off supporting the Mangry League Club in uh, Mangry 50 years ago. The Mighty Mangrish Talks. 
that's where my love for rugby league started. Then I got involved in the Kiwis, and when the Warriors come along, yeah, just loved my league, loved the boys. I went out and watched the under twenties train last night. I took them a big feed of. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, those sandwiches, Subway, Subway. Oh yeah, okay. Bananas yeah, yeah. and apples and yeah. yeah. You can actually see some photos in my on my in my newsletter, mate, that I put out either late tonight or tomorrow, and it will be up on my website by maybe tomorrow afternoon. You go to SirPeterLeach.co.nz, SirPeterLeach.co.nz, and you'll see some exclusive photos of the under twenties, mate. Are you a, a warrior fan, mate? Um, yeah, 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 have been. And there's just one other thing my mate told me to say to you. Uh, Mungity hard. Mungity hard, brother. <laughs> Say it with passion. Say it with passion, brother. Mungity hard. Mungity hard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was telling me it was up in one of the um, rooms of you on one of the Warriors game, and yeah, he was with you drinking, and that's what he kept saying to you. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, All Aaron, right, we has got one of those stories, eh, mate? And you can ask anybody. Go ahead and ask anybody. Yeah, you can ask anybody. Anything, anything, anything. In studio with us, Sir Peter Leach, a.k.a. The Mad Butcher, a.k.a. The 19th Vodafone Warrior. That's me, baby. Yeah? <laughs> and you asked me a question. You said, are the Junior Warriors still going? They play on Saturday, mm-hmm. Sky, Sky Sport 2, 7 o'clock. Yeah. They take on Parramatta. Where? In Sydney. Okay. Are you okay. going? No, because I'm speaking in horror. I told you that before. Okay, mate. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, bloody exciting. We've got to play you something. Um, there is a guy that works on our station, and I'm sure that people try and do impressions of you all the time. This guy, can we play you his impression? Go ahead, Ol. And you have to judge it out of ten. I'll rate him. Okay, all right. This, all right. This here is, we go. This is our friend Noel, the video bogan. G'day, it's your old mate, the Mad Butcher. Oh my god, I've got some delicious pork steak fillets for you guys this week. So delicious, <laughs> you want to rub them all over your body. And a massive shout out to my number one sausage fan, Mike Peru. He gobbles more sausages than, <laughs> well, anybody else, that's for sure. So make sure you check it out, the Mad Butcher. <sighs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Mike won't be happy to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I've analysed it, and uh, I think he's he is an amateur. There's mm-hmm. no question about that. Okay. Got some work to and, do. Uh, that, well, I'd say he's got a lot of work to do. But, <laughs> you know, he gave it his best shot. But, you see, you got to say, he, there's no passion there. The thing about me, i got passion. Mm-hmm. And when I do those ads, come on, you're all mate, the mad butcher here. This week we've got rump steak. It's rump steak. Oh, <laughs> delicious. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait to get my teeth around that bloody bit of rump steak. <laughs> when you do that, you I don't breathe. You. And you go quite red and you get right into it. That's I'm, where the passion comes from. Mate, I'm the quickest 30-second man in the business. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean no, no, I don't mean sex. No, 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 no. <laughs> We've got Tina on the line who wants to ask you a question. What do you want to ask the Mad Butcher, Tina? So, when I was in Australia, I tried crocodile. So, I want to know what's the strangest meat you've tried around the world. Ah. Well, to be fair, Tina, can I tell you about crocodile meat? No, yeah. it was kangaroo meat I brought in. I bought a load of kangaroo meat and I thought it'd be great on the barbie. It's lean and people are going to love it. Let me tell you, the worst decision I make cost me about $150,000. Wow. No one wanted to eat Skippy. No. Uh, i got to be honest with you, I am a very conservative eater and so I don't cross the line. I went to the uh, Hokitika Wild Food Festival once as a judge yeah. and they wanted me to do all this strange stuff and I'm eating it and when no one's looking, I'm spitting it out. So <laughs> I'm a... I'm a pussy when it comes to eating strange food. Have you eaten horse? No. You haven't eaten horse? I would not eat that horse I backed and it come dead last. I wouldn't eat it. You wouldn't even eat that one? No. All right. We've got a fast five questions for you now. This is just five questions straight off the top of our dome. You answer them as quick as you can. All right? Who is someone that you just cannot stand? Sit right in opposite me here. Clint. Oh. Oh, mate. Clint. That cuts me deep. Aww. That cuts me real deep, Butch. All right, um, who's your favourite warrior of all time? Stacey Jones. Who have you been starstruck by when you met them? My beautiful wife, Janice. Aww. Aww. And finally, has anybody ever... Yeah, you, even you're giving yourself the gag <laughs> reflex there. Um, has anybody ever, ever, ever beaten the Mad Butcher's mate? No one. Ever? Never. Never, ever, 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 never, ever. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Sir Peter Leach, the Mad Butcher, our guest for Ask Me Anything this afternoon. I genuinely want to ask you one last question, because I am impressed by the fact that you're about to be married for 50 years. What do no, you... No, th- 59. 
Oh, I thought you said 49 no. years of four. Sorry. No, 59. 59, okay. Yeah, yeah I what think so. What do you no, think? Yeah. That would mean that you got married when you were 11. <laughs> yeah, well, go on. No, go on. what do you think is the secret to a successful marriage? Tolerance. Tolerance. No, Tolerance. I'm not very good at that. I'm going to be divorced by the time I'm 30. Not going to lie, I was hoping it was meat, but... <laughs> Thanks for having me in there. Don't forget that website, superpeterleach.co.nz. Go on up late tomorrow and see that news there. Oh, there's some great photos of the Junior Warriors. There's a whole lot of news in there. Have a great day. The Mad Butcher, everybody! Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the Edge. How are you, Chang? Hello, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're so serious when you come in to do this. It is time to do Chinese New Year with Chang. And every time he comes in, he thinks he's like the Chinese Hillary Barry over there with his paper. Chang, no, yeah, it's stop, on... stop shuffling your paper like you've got good news or real news or anything like this that. This is very topical and okay. very funny. Oh, Yesterday okay. you brought us a terrible one. It was about... Um, I thought it was good, but it's very visual. Yeah, that was the problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is the radio medium, yes. Chang. And this is actually in mainland China. Okay. So this story from the Chinese people. Tell My us people. the story. Um, you know the iPhone 6 that goes on sale tonight at midnight? Yep, 12.01 yep. at Vodafone stores. Yes, um, it is available on, in sale in Hong Kong already, but mm-hmm. it's not available in mainland China because okay. the Chinese government hasn't approved it yet. Okay. Because ah. there's only one company that's allowed to sell it in mainland China and they're still processing it. Wow. So what happens is people buy it from Hong Kong and smuggle it into mainland China. Okay. Uh, 1,800 phones has been seized at the border. Really? How, yeah. how can they tell? What, what do you mean? Like, why, why could they not just smuggle it in and pretend it's an iPhone 5? Because people are smuggling that many. One guy uh. has been caught smuggling not one, not two, not three, but eight iPhone 6 down his underpants. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> now, they're very thin, but once you get eight of them... It's... Exactly. And where would you put it? Where, if I was smuggling it? No, where in your undies is what I mean. We're just around the sides and the back, I Hang guess. on. He was wearing three layers of underpants. Oh, oh, so it's like a lasagna. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like With a las- the mid in between. <laughs> yeah, and it, 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 the, the uh, foam was the pasta. Yeah, the sheets of pasta. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. If you do want an iPhone six, though, uh, they are going to be going on sale at. I feel like the iPhone six would have been the would have been the mints. No, and the undies with the yeah. lasagna. Yeah, no, yeah. He's got the meat. He's yeah, he's, they're the meat. Yeah, he's the meat. No, he's bringing the meat. Yeah. Oh, God. You okay. know? Okay. Uh, I'll let you have a look. Hey, and well done to our, yourself tonight. I will listen to Chelsea from Monaco, who's going to be winning a free iPhone for herself. Yeah, that's yes. cool. Yeah. If you do want to get a Vodafone, uh, sorry, an iPhone 6 or an uh, iPhone 6 Plus, they go on sale 12.01am tonight at Vodafone stores in Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch, and Dunedin. And don't forget, Vodafone has New Zealand's largest 4G network, so it's the perfect home for your new iPhone 6. What's happening to the iPhone smuggler in, in China, Chang? Uh, he's waiting two sentences, probably to death. <laughs> a, it's a horrible rules in China. There's a very yeah. dark end to Chinese news here, but thank you. Do you know what he should do? They should make him play the Kim Kardashian game for the rest of his life because I tell you what, that, that'll drive you insane. That's a death sentence. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint. On the edge. On the phone right now, live from the QT Sydney, we have Mrs. JJ Harvey. Hey, JJ. Hello. It's Clinton Sharon, our name's Clinton Sharon. You worked with us for nine no, I know. years. I was actually just wondering, I didn't hear Guy's voice there. Oh, he... no. He's still in America, but we just wanted to catch up with you because you're in Sydney at the moment. What are you doing tonight? Like, you've gone over there to interview someone, and Leon won't tell us who it is. Who are you interviewing? I've literally just arrived a couple of minutes ago, and uh, Sophie and I have walked into the QT, and they've given us one bed and two. So. Awesome. Oh, no. Pillow fight. Yeah, Clinton. Settle down. Last time I slept with Sophie, she beat me up because she's she's like I'm a snorer and she's a kicker. So oh. <laughs> she's sexy, Kinky. sexy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so but, you guys are getting all doled up, and then what are you going to mm, do? Well, who knows? Um, we are going to get doled up, and then we are going to interview Juliana Rancic from <gasps> Fashion Police and the E Channel. I am so jealous. She, I love her. She is actually amazing. What sort of things are you going to talk to her about? Who knows? Have you got any ideas? Are you allowed? What, <laughs> can you just ask her about how she's so amazing and ask her about Joan Rivers? Yeah, are you like, allowed ask her to? About heaps of things. Are you allowed to ask her about Joan Rivers? That's the one question I've been told not to ask her. Oh no <laughs> oh, way! What? Well, she's tired of talking about it. I think. So. Yeah, I guess it would be quite upsetting for her. Now, what what's she doing yeah. in Sydney? Oh, she's just doing some local thing here. It's 
bit boring. We don't care back home. But um, I'll be interviewing her, and we'll bring it um, on a Monday morning. So we got ripped off in the taxi on the way here. Yeah. Disgusting. So first of all, we get this taxi driver who pretends he can't speak much English. And we're in a taxi, and he takes a wrong turn, and the police pull him over. What? It's a block from our hotel. The fare is like $44 or something. Mm. So he stops the he has to stop the meter because the cop asked him to. Mm. And we're sitting there thinking, we're going to be here forever. So we get out of the cab and decide to walk around the block to our hotel, which we did. I gave him the pay charge thing to charge the cab up. He charged me $117. <gasps> what? Oh, my God. He charged me for the fine that he was getting as well. No. So um, you charged me a little bit extra, and then he pretended that it was an accident. Did you get the <laughs> money me, back? He gave me 50 bucks back. <laughs> okay, that mate. That is so bad. Well, enjoy the rest of your trip in Sydney, and um, tell Juliana that we said hi, and we love her. Totally well. Okay, guys. If you want to hear that chat with JJ and Juliana Rancic from the E! Channel, it'll be on JJ, Mike, and Dom show on Monday morning, so join. Say hi to Sophie for me. Ask, ask for us. Hey, don't you have a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Guy, Sharon and Clint on the urge. Remember um, last, earlier in the week when I introduced you to a new feature on the show called Clint's Technology Corner? Yes. Clint's Techno Corner. Yep. Uh, still, the jingle still needs work. It still needs work, yes. Do you want to hear about some more techno stuff? Yes, I do. The new app out. What's it called? It's like Tinder mm-hmm. and it's like Grinder. Yes. But it's not for sex. Really? What is it for then? It's for cuddling. So, when you say it's not, it's like grinder. Mm-hmm. Is it cuddling for same-sex couples, or is it anything? Anything. Well, cuddling is cuddling is, um, I think, by definition, before you take it too far. Yeah. Um, not uh, sexually orientated, so it doesn't matter if it's straight or gay. You can True. Just, you just cuddle someone. Shivers like, like I'll do. cuddle Chang. That'd be good though if you're quite if you're quite lonely. Mm. So I, what, I cuddled Noel from the Edge TV. Editing department today. Okay, how was that for you? Um, it was good. He enjoyed it. He hadn't had a cuddle for a while. This is about cuddling strangers, though. So what it does mm-hmm. is it gives you a map of people around you, um, and I guess you have a cuddler profile, and um, you tap on the people that you like, and you like, and it sends them a message, and it's like um, Sharon wants to come and give you a cuddle, and then from there, if they say, "Yeah, I'm keen for a cuddle," mm. you've got um, half an hour. The connection lasts half an hour, and you can message each other and be like, "Hey, meet me um, at Peter Pit." And, um, we'll go cuddle at Peter Pit. Yeah, and we'll have a cuddle. Um, stand up cuddle, sit down cuddle. You'd have to meet somewhere where there's a bed to have a um, uh, LDC, a lie down cuddle. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, you- so it's any sort of cuddle. It could just be like a standing at the bar cuddle. Anything, yeah. Well, the, the terms of the cuddle. Do you specify cuddle- what sort of cuddles you like? You do- can do that in the chat. You can yeah. do that before you, before oh, you so commit to it. Oh, so on your profile, you're like, hi, my name is Sharon. I like being a little spoon. Yeah. I like to put my feet in a nook. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do what you want. Okay. Yeah. So you had to put that. Yeah. Right. I didn't know if you had to specify whether you didn't like being big spoon or small spoon. Yeah. The problem the problem with cuddler is you're getting very in each other's personal space. Mm, and you l- can't tell from a profile um, what someone smells like. Yes, and spooning usually leads to forking. Yeah. <laughs> so you ask you kind of you're kind of setting yourself up for a beer trap. Yeah, to be honest, I think cuddler has more dodgy connotations than it does nice ones, but I think the intentions were sweet. Mm. Um, and if you're interested in it, if you need a cuddle, maybe hit up the app store and have a look for Cuddler. And that's another edition of Clint's Techno Corner. It's about technology. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. Last week at this time, uh, well, not actually this time, it was on Friday, but last week Guy left us to go on holiday for two weeks. Mm. And now Clint's leaving us to go on holiday for two weeks. Mm. What a dick. So I'm going to be here Everybody's with... Everybody's leaving you. I'm going to be here with Oscar for the next week and a bit, so do hang out with us. Um, but before you left, I took the liberty, I took the liberty upon myself to write a song for you, Clint, from me and our special listener friends. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> it's a remix. <sighs> Sorry, I burped. So long, farewell. We hope you have a good flight. We hate to see you go and leave us so good. Bye. Oh, God. Have a good trip. Don't forget to bring back a Toblerone. <laughs> <laughs> Today's Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast is brought to you by Grass. Perfect for gardens and sport. Get grass today from your friendly grass vendor. <laughs>